to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though... If you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with shot and nails. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's the real world, I choose to go my life to. That's okay. It means something, it means something. And they got away. Yeah. You know, that's my take on it. Like, what's yours? Protonic River Song! That's like a science thing, right? Yes, yes, indeed it is. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact. We are all up in your face. Welcome to the one, the only, the home of the Protonic Reversal. Yeah, man. Boy, what a difference a couple of weeks make. <laughs> Right? I mean, last time we were talking to Mark Lanigan, it was good times. We were talking about things as if, you know, just normal human activity was a thing that was going to happen for a while. And uh, then there you go. Uh, Literally everything changed. So, yeah, welcome to the first COVID-19 episode, I suppose. And this show is all about social, social distancing. Uh, but not distancing yourself from rad music and epiphanies with cool folks. So tonight is Mr. John Nunez of uh, of Torch. Great dude, great player. Looking forward to talking to him. They just had to cancel their entire European tour. I think they're even going to have to cancel Roadburn, which is a major bummer uh, for all involved, for sure. Because, um, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. And, you know, they're a band that makes their money on touring. So, bummer, to put it lightly. Uh, looking forward to talking to that guy. Interesting fella. What is it to say? Um, well, there's plenty of news with this show. Specifically, there's a bunch of stuff coming up. There's some announcements coming up also. Uh, not this episode. So, stay tuned. But there's a bunch of exciting things happening. Uh, it's all good. If you are a long-time listener of the show, or even just good with numbers and the fact that you can read them, you can know we're uh, coming up to episode 150. There's something really cool planned. And, yeah, stick with it. RadioNeutron.com. Live show, Radio Note, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. Oh, wait, no, no. I totally messed that up. Jesus Christ. (laughs) 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific. And, uh, yeah, you know, th- th- there's a lot happening and in the world and in general and with this show and with this station and some of it is good. Most of it is bad, but there's exciting stuff brewing. And I, I feel like you should know that uh, subscribe to the show. If you haven't already stitcher, uh, iTunes, if you are on Spotify shows on Spotify, all that rate and review it, like the Facebook page, all that stuff helps It all. I'll help us build a better show. I don't want to get too preachy about it, but I, I wish it didn't. I wish that none of that mattered. That would be a world I would like to live in, but it's not the world that we live in. Uh, anyway, let's listen to a couple songs by Torch, and then we'll uh, talk to Mr. Jonathan Nunez. This is a um, title track on the last record, Admission. It goes like this.
Linda pretty much goes on like that for a while. It's a great song. Uh, it's <laughs> one of my favorite Torch songs. That's, uh, of course, Out Again on Songs for Singles. Uh, lesser known amongst the Torch discography. But a great, great album. And before that, we had the title track from Admission. That's a good one, too. That That's very recent. So for a lot of folks, if you're newer to Torch, that might be the only one you know. Certainly uh, playing a lot of it last time I saw him. Uh, and Mr. Nunez, how are you doing, sir? Pretty good, pretty good. Crawling out of a studio hole, warp, war, wormhole, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Yeah, deep, deep, deep in it, deep, deep in the mix, deep in the, uh, deep in everything. Exactly. Yes, yeah. all patched up and lost in the wires. It, it it happens. It happens for sure. Of course, studio stuff's a big part of your life. Uh, you 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 do a lot of tracking, recording, mixing, the whole the whole deal. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, you've also very recently, not that recently, I guess, like more re- since I talked to you last, mm-hmm. started building like pedals and amps. The the whole. Uh, the whole whole Megillah, yeah. as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all in, all in. It's like, you know, the average person might just kind of like feel out how the music uh, or independent music uh, lifestyle, you know, kind of uh, what it brings in or whatnot. Maybe straight the path, uh, maybe in another direction. But I've just gone all in. I guess you could say. Yeah, you're kind of touching them all, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for real but it's cool because it's it's been interesting seeing that uh build up from you know just being like hey gonna do a thing it's like oh cool torch guy's yeah. gonna do a thing and then it's like oh no like there's a bunch of people getting these and like this seems to be like some real deal stuff what yeah it's just the idea is to do something different to uh not like pre-designate or kind of like hone in on a certain niche era genre but to give people essentially what we're hoping is more than enough so that they can carve out and shape a sound that they have in their heads, uh, something that really uh, accommodates and kind of, uh, you know, highlights all the nuances and cool things that they're trying to do within their music. And just kind of get, it's something that you should be able to come back to time and time again and find new sounds, find new things, you know, like once you do a record, you kind of maybe want to do something similar that's tonal, you know, as your signature tone in the next one, but chances sure. are you kind of want to do something different, you know? Right, 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 absolutely. And and that's, uh, so do you feel like the stuff you're building is just kind of t- taking what you like out of already stuff that's already there or like feeling a need for something that didn't exist before? Exactly, yeah. It's not following any sort of, no, there's no, um, you know, uh, blueprints laying around or schematics or older stuff. Like, you know, I always tell people, you know, we're, we're not trying to like recycle or regurgitate any circuits or design. We're trying to do something just new, fresh, different, like literally starting on the breadboard. Um, we do use, uh, components that are not used in, um, you know, guitar equipment. So that already kind of, you know, sets us a bit apart. And the thing is like, you can, it's not like you're going to get an, a weird sound like playing guitar with distortion through a hi-fi system or something. It's not like something weird like that. <laughs> right, it's <yeah>. like, <laughs> it, if anything, it's more pure, more uh, of that analog depth that just hits so much harder and sounds so much realer, has, uh, if that's even a word, uh, you know, higher fidelity, but still has like, nice tight and gritty or just a little bit of dirt to it up like beyond disgusting amounts of gain or whatever right and so do you find that i mean and there this is something that where when you are a, somebody that plays music in a certain genre obviously you have you know friends and acquaintances from that genre and people kind of know you yeah. from that do you find that a lot of people are coming from like the heavier world uh when they're, yeah that's definitely definitely how it started but at the same time i just recently a gentleman that picked up uh one of the bass pedals just was like uh super thrilled and the producer he was with was really trying to not have him leave his facility with the pedal he's like man uh can you lend me that and they were they were they were just having a blast recording like you know these fuzzy kind of like almost synth like dance 
dancey fuzz song so you know more electronic bass music we have uh i'm gonna probably gonna butcher his last name but uh tim lafrieb uh that plays with david bowie sure and a tons of other people and now i think he's like playing with the black crows he's he bought one like maybe by now like a year ago and Oh, wow. You know, we're very that, grateful. That, that's some pretty big names. I mean, that's that's kind yeah, of yeah. And he does a lot of cool stuff. And you know, some of these guys get showered with a lot of you know more like corporate, um, right? That you know, items. And hey, man, and no, who doesn't love a free gift? But it kind of speaks volumes when someone that gets you know flooded with shit year round seeks out your product and actually, you know is curious enough to actually spend their hard-earned money on it. So to me, like, yes, there's people playing heavier heavier stuff, gravitating to our stuff because the expanded range, you know? Right. But at the same time, we got a lot of, like, people are playing all sorts of different types of jazz because you can just set, like, the distortion lower and it just kind of create, you can use it for uh, a more realistic, deeper, more, n- like, natural sound. Like, it actually embellishes the natural characteristics of your instrument. So it's kind of interesting. You never know who's buying this stuff, and sometimes people, you know, send testimonials or whatever, and I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. Well, yeah, because it's it's kind of what a lot of people that are getting into, you know, the more boutique side of, like, effects or amplification or whatnot yeah. don't always realize is... is um, you know, some, sometimes it's, it's a lot about like what you're already playing on as well. And you can get wildly different results based on what you're playing on versus, you know, just the device itself. And it, it's a device as like a complement for like an overall meal, if you will, a toned meal. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah for sure. I, I get you. I get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that can, that can actually, uh, you can get really interesting results that you maybe you wouldn't get if you were just sitting there at guitar center you know, mucking around yeah. on like whatever they, whatever uh, the big corporation pedals yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, and there's some classics too, but there's just, you know, there's certain things about a hand wired signal path and cert, you know, class A discrete circuitry. It's just immediate, you know, like the fact that, you know, we did a test at, uh, we recently played and did some video stuff um, at Chicago Music Exchange and we plugged the pedal in. Uh, to the effects return of an amp, meaning you're only going to be using the power section of the amp, not the preamp section. So right. the, all the controls in the front typically don't matter. Some designs, master volume, presence for certain other uh, amp designs, it's like resonance, presence, uh, and that's it. Um, we did a test where we got a great sound out of this super expensive thing. It was like a $3,700 amp. And everyone's like, yep, yeah, that sounds good. Everybody agrees. Yeah, cool, cool, great. Sounds great. And we plug the pedal to the back, and, like, it gets me every time. I'm like, holy shit. And <laughs> everyone, ever, it was just like, it was like where we weren't hearing the sound through, like, a straw anymore. It was just like, right. oof, as wide as you could imagine, and or as wide as you wanted. And, I mean, it went great. And then we they did this thing where we did, like, <clears throat> signature pedals with the album art on it and we did like a I saw limited yeah. run of 25 yeah. yeah it was like 25 and it sold out super quick and it was really exciting but it was cool to be in that atmosphere where like literally just about anything is within our within arm, arm's reach and plugged in the pedal and you know that was a nice introduction into working with uh you know uh a company that is respected you know in the gear world and i think they have a good taste and you know Sure, absolutely. I mean, that's it, yeah. it's. It seems like that's like rabbit rally too. It's like some, something where it's like not, that's not exactly yeah. off brand. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, it's cool to like, you know, come across other companies. I think it's just a really exciting time for uh, musical equipment and recording stuff, uh, amongst other things. But I just feel like there's more people that are day in day out in the studio on the road, in in more. I would. You know, not to sound like a fucking asshole or something, but in I do it more... all the time. Don't worry, and people even still okay, listen to the show. Go. So, <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm jumping. I'm I'm jumping right in. Here, here come the emails. But uh, it's just like there's a, there's people out there that are maybe conservative with designs, or maybe there's people that collaborate, create something great, but then because of certain business models, it gets sent to like you know uh, like. A qual uh, a income control department, if that's even a thing, it's like, all right, yeah. we have this. How can we make it for 
a fraction of the price. How can, what can, how we, can we make more money on this and have it cost us less? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So You're, we're kind of like yeah. the idiots that are doing the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving someone like high value for a, a, a low cost and it's all hand built and you can have interactions yeah. with the people building it. And yeah, I mean, that's, I, I think you hit on something. I mean, you know, we've talked about it on this show before. Just the idea that we're in this sort of golden age of not even like just boutique pedals, but just everybody like the maker age almost. That yeah, and I think that's great. Yeah, I have a friend out in um, I think it's Ketteridge, Colorado, and he made this snare that was freaking ridiculous. And I, I was describing a sound. It was a snare that I recorded. It was like in the twenties or the thirties while I was living in LA, and I was like, man, this sound is. It was so crazy how effortless it was to get this sound that just kind of, I've been, you know, you hear time and time, like, not anymore so much, but like, an older recordings, and it's just such a specific sound that just sounds so complete, and you can tell it's not through, like, a bunch of, like, processing, it's just the sound of the drum. Right. And, you know, sending him a clip of something, that, that, that snare that I recorded, I'm like, this thing just, it did all the work, you know, I just put yeah. a freaking microphone in it. You don't have to, like, EQ and it, you don't have to use some special no, mic, or... <laughs> not at all, it was just like a, sig- a normal signal ch- signal chain, yeah. and, you know, he thought about it, he listened, his knowledge of wood, he consulted with some other drum makers, and he delivered a snare that beyond surpassed what uh, I was trying to go for. So it's just, like, a really cool time. We have... Uh, and also, like, you know, as time goes on, like, certain bands slow down, or people are searching for something else, or, like, are trying to make ends meet, to be honest, you know, with, you know, if you're playing music for a living. And I have a friend that makes insane guitars. He was in this punk band called Against All Authority, and, uh, he made, he made a guitar, uh, that was, that's outstanding. I've been playing it since we started touring for this record. Uh, other friend in LA, Sasha Dunable, makes excellent guitars. Oh yeah, yeah. First guitar, yeah, dude. Those guitars rule. It was like the first guitar I felt comfortable on after moving over from bass. Everything else was just kind of like I don't. I feel awkward. Is this gonna work? Like, what am I getting myself into? But I don't know. It's just a really cool time with a lot of people who I guess like their mind might be in a certain area that maybe seems more on par with someone that spends at least half the year in a van and like it's really trying to enjoy and get the most out of their equipment for those 30 minutes to an hour each night well and it's it seems like it's it's built with that kind of mindset involved too right i mean you have like a (laughs) when you have something where you you know what is like you know through just trial and error uh like likely to fail or be a problem <laughs> you're gonna know to avoid doing that kind of stuff and and that's totally that's the difference between like you know designing something in like the uh the ivory tower <laughs> or something along those lines For real. Versus, versus you know being a, a band that actually is on the road uh yeah that's a good way to put it actually <laughs> So you you, you kind of uh, dropped it as an aside. The whole moving from bass to guitar thing for Torch. Uh, you had yeah. I can't remember if it was EGC or Travis Bean that you that you played EGC. before, and of course the Dunable are uh, also aluminum necks, uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, this is uh, something where, of course, um, you know, last time I talked to you, Andrew uh, was still in the band. This was a long freaking time ago, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know there there was a change up and and when he left the lineup you moved from bass to the guitar and you got uh, the fella from uh wrong uh to to play bass for you yeah the the bass player from I mean, blah, blah, blah. he just plays everything so it's hard to keep track of the right. singer guitar player from wrong and then actually their other guitar player is our front of house oh that oh oh i did not know that okay Oh, all right. Yeah. You got like wrong bingo there. One more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's, it's, that's how it is down here in South Florida, Miami specifically. It's like, it's not the biggest collection of people or scene or whatever, mm-hmm. but the ones that put in the time and make the sacrifices and I guess can't, can't get enough of this mess. Uh, <laughs> you know, it kinda, it's like, a re- exactly. Right. Um, it's a revolving cast kind of, and, uh, I mean, he's bailed us out in the past, filling in on drums on our first European tour, and then another set of dates, um, with High on Fire, some shit by now, like 10, 11 years ago. So, yeah, he, he, it was crazy how that all came about. Uh, we, we did a European tour, 
um, with Andrew Stone, a band with uh, Red Fang. And it just, I think it was, it was at, at like, it was easy to see at that point that for everybody's interest, like it was just, you know, we needed to figure it out and figuring it out meant like, you know, just moving forward, uh, right. being, you know, productive. And it just like, there was just certain things that needed to be resolved, but it just, it just kind of felt like a, a circle that if it didn't end, it could have, it could have gotten way worse and it didn't need to be. Um, so on a nine day, maybe 12 day break from end of tour to the beginning of a U.S. tour with Red Fang as well, that decision was made. I spoke with Andrew. He understood, you know, and we don't have any, you know, it's not like the bad blood or anything. And, um, yeah, the, I mean, Steve and Rick were like, why don't you play guitar on a bunch of shit on the records? Why don't you just play? I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. I'm, I could, and then I we asked Eric. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, I will strum. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we asked Eric, and he was in, and 9 to 12 days later, we're playing, again, a totally different lineup in San Francisco. We, uh, the show was at Slim's sold out show with Red Fang and you know it was kind of funny because you could tell they didn't want to say anything they're mm. still like they saw it but John was like man I just got to do it. Uh, that's the Red Fang drummer John yeah, yeah. Sherman John Sherman he yeah. was like man uh, I don't want to say too much but I can't believe you guys are doing this but I'm excited and just like ran out of the room <laughs> and then <laughs> dude we went on and I, I I'm i like you know there was a really nice person working at Fender at the time and they, they were shipping Dude, this show was wild. They were shipping me guitars, and they were supposed to get to the venue. I was supposed to set them up for ridiculous, uh, pain in the ass tuning, mm-hmm. and one, uh, it didn't get there. For, uh, <laughs> oh, the case, the, the, the case did. How about that? Oh a yeah, yeah, good. That, that's a, that's the most important part I got there. I'll so put, that's good. <laughs> string, put strings on it and roll and rock, exactly. you know. <laughs> but uh, I had a guitar that I brought as in case shit, and in case shit became reality mm. uh and it's basically a all parts um little jaguar kit thing mm-hmm. and it works great for my grindcore band where short scale and it's the tuning we use works great but this torch is a whole nother thing yeah so you i have, play you guitar tuned to stupid and you're you know it's not necessarily yeah, set up exactly. for that <laughs> yeah. absolutely and it's just like i'm trying to do leads and the frets just get so tiny it's insane yeah but luckily that was only for the bomb string stuff but okay it was like from the first strum of that uh with that guitar for those songs i was like this shit ain't gonna work and then uh but it was still you know that guitar was it was a whole nother thing that thing didn't arrive till we were in arizona we soldered pickups and did all shit before going on stage it was amazing but anyhow uh i had a gibson les paul custom that i borrowed money um to get and paid it back after a tour, and immediately you know, a- a- after that first show, I'm like, I don't know if this shit's gonna stick around. So I was cleaning this guitar religiously after every set. But uh, one thing I have to mention is I was like, don't fuck up that mentality. Yeah. And I literally was so like, just trying to keep track of all the stuff where to, where I put my effects in and out. And this is literally like, I don't know, the third or fourth time playing guitar. You know, <laughs> right. decent length set list. <laughs> Dude, I had a fucking headache. By the end of that set, I had a fucking headache. I was like, oh my God. Well, I'm, I'm sure because like, if you think about it, like, you know, yeah, like it, it's, it's, you've been playing in this band for years, but it's not the instrument you've been playing. It's a totally different thing. And there's way more stuff to yeah. have to remember. And you don't have that muscle it's memory. Fucking guitar solos, man. Yeah. It was, there was guitar solos now. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so we go downstairs and everyone's like, holy shit. That was awesome. Like, we felt great. It felt like something we hadn't felt or maybe never felt before. It was just like a certain energy and excitement. And I was like, all right, first one's down. Like, maybe that was a little too good. It's going to catch up with us within <laughs> the next three or four shows, and we're going to fuck it up. Yeah. But then we're going to bounce back. It's like we got we got an uh, – it was like a loner of a good set. It was like, all right, I'll give you this one, but you're going to pay it later. Yeah. So these guys ran in. They're like, holy shit, that was awesome. I can't believe you pulled it off. Ah. And that tour was great. And I think from then on, it kind of set a certain standard or a precedent. It was like, hey, we're having fun. We're enjoying this shit. We're very lucky to be doing it. Whether, you know, it's 
you know, at the end of the tour, whether it was like, oh, that was that, or that was great. It doesn't matter. We're here to enjoy those moments. We're here to work together. We're enjoying the fact that we're writing these songs, coming together, putting, finalizing them, going through the whole process of recording, mixing, mastering, having it press, and now we're going to be there. So we were working towards that point, you know, and that tour was great. We did, we, I feel like we did a kind of like a cool, different uh, array of trips uh, around that lineup pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel we did, uh, the Red Fang tour, which is a full month. We did, uh, about two weeks with Gojira, which was very different for us. And it was awesome. Those guys were fucking great. Especially Joe, the singer. Uh, we did, uh, several dates with Boris, um, and some here and there that I'm having a hard time remembering, but it was kind of cool. Like, I feel like the word got out, these guys have a certain energy now, like they're enjoying it, you know, this and yeah. that. And it kind of like plowed the road into making the new record and continuing, you know? Well, and it's interesting that the, you know, it, it's for, for a band that has an identity and a, and a sound and, and a fan base, you know, not the y'all or Van Halen or anything necessarily, but I mean, let's no, be clear. There's, a, there's There's a fan base and there's people that, you know, love those songs and they, and they associate, a certain sound and certain songs with the band. And anytime there's any change, there's always that kind of natural suspicion of like, Oh, I don't know. What's this all about? Yeah. And it kind of mm -hmm. seemed like to me that you guys pulled the more, not mysterious, uh, but a more low key approach to just being like, all right, we're just going to show you. We're not going to tell you anything. We're just going to show you, which yeah. I thought worked well. And definitely like it's, it, it's something that I think panned out, and it's, it's something where it allowed the fans just to kind of figure it out on their own and be like, "Oh no, everything's cool. All right, right on." This is—I don't know what I was worried about. Was I worried about something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it worked, and like people knew of like you know they were like the wrong fans were like, "Oh shit, this is cool," and people that had seen us play with her were like, "Oh man, that makes perfect sense," you know? Yeah. And yeah, because we've also taken not only wrong on tour, we've taken. Um, Actually, funnily enough, it's Eric, our bass player, and Ryan, our sound guy, not only wrong on tour, but their old band, Capsule. So it's kind of like people saw it coming, or not see, saw it coming, but they're like, oh, shit, totally, this makes sense. And right. people were curious and kind of like, you could tell they're like, they maybe had some ideas of what was to come, and maybe some of that might have been right. Some of it was definitely different. So it was kind of like, I feel like a very positive thing. There was those like negative hangups or people saying like, it was not going to be the same. Or it's like, we, it was a very positive thing too. You know, was, there was no drama and Andrew was quick to jump in and, uh, form a band with, uh, two excellent players yeah. um, and excellent guys. Yeah. Uh, from old man, uh, the old man, uh, was their band, right. which we took out on tour also. Uh, yeah, that band's great. Dead now. I actually had I, Andrew on, uh, not that long ago to uh, okay. talk about that. And it's cool. Cause it's kind of like, Oh, it sounds a bit like tilts, but it's a little proggier and weirder. And like, that's totally okay with me. Like, that's, <laughs> that yeah, yeah. Great. Dude, those guys, those two guys, his rhythm section is awesome. Great guys. And I think that, that, um, that's going to lend itself to writing music. That's really going to like from one release to the next, I think it's going to be like, they're really going to dig in to their abilities because they can play like fucking motherfuckers. But yeah. I think it's going to grow. You know, I think that's sure, something that yeah, yeah. should be, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, crossing paths, playing with them and hearing, you know, something cool that they're going to be up to sooner than later. And yeah, man, it's, it's like, it's, that's the one thing I'll say through the two lineup changes that we have had with the previous guitar players. It's like, it's the type of thing where it's like, hey, this isn't working out on both sides. This is why we acknowledge it. And this one was definitely smoother than the other one. But right. it's it's like, I don't, it's not like, oh, we're going to keep on and I hope they never do anything. No, in fact, it's the opposite. I'm like, dude, I'm curious to see what we're going to do. Yeah, I'm you're, excited. You're like, stoked. You're, it's it's, your, it's yeah, someone it's you like, have a very close, like, sibling-like relationship with and you're excited for them to do well. Exactly. It's like, dude, from now, instead of just being one band, now there'll be two bands. You know, yeah. it's, that's the way I always look at it. Yeah. It'll be like more, more to come out of this whole thing, you know? 
So, and that's, um, and, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because it's, it's been so long now. Like, I almost kind of forgot about the Juan Montoya days, uh, even mm-hmm. though, you know, like, I still, I'll still throw on Neanderthal and be like, oh, wow, this is a great record. But it's just, it seems like it's so long ago. Uh, but I do like, you know, you'll still play like some of the, some of the, the hits, quote unquote, air quotes yeah. implied off yeah, of right. it. Yeah. <laughs> because they're good tunes. Yeah. But, you know, I never actually, I never actually knew what, what was, what was the, uh, and, you know, maybe we talked about this before i don't remember talking about it but mm-hmm. was was that acrimonious or was that just more troublesome than the break with andrew or what i mean i feel like it came at a time where we were i mean it's kind of like a similar uh, circumstance in the fact that we were touring a bunch but to be honest actually with the whole Juan ordeal we were like touring insane i was seeing my friends in texas more regularly um, overseeing like friends and family back home. Um, <laughs> That's how you so, know you're touring a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, I was here like a couple weeks ago, and I already got my routine here. Yeah. Um, but the thing I'll get to now is saying that it's just, man, if there's things going on, and if communication isn't healthy coming from both directions, that with many many tours planned and ahead of you and you being in the thick of it yeah it's never going to be good and that's not anything new we all know that we've all seen documentaries or read books well you know, <laughs> totally, yeah. <laughs> and if you're listening to the like, show chances uh, are you know all about it <laughs> right fuck but it was like i want to say it was like a two to three month tour uh fucking plan that we were uh, living through with very 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 short breaks to the point where coming home was almost questionable because it was it was like five days or less you know and just enough time to get disoriented it, <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah it's just like oh ugh, back in and uh we, yeah we i think like the stuff started to really mount on this one trip where we were touring out west and then we did a uh we went down to japan and that's where things started to turn and then back on the west coast and we had some days off so everyone you know was kind of like doing their own thing and then we got back together and the shit just started back up and that line that lineup didn't make it past texas um and it was it took a minute you know it took a minute for things to calm down and cool down or whatever but i mean it's fine but there i will say with that relationship what's there's still certain things that are it could the heat can be turned on, but it hasn't been like that. And if it is, I think I'm pretty good at being logical and communicating. If it's being directed towards me, mm-hmm. but I feel like we've always been very um, trustworthy, and as far as like you know, making sure that anything that's owed or you know. Um, Ex members are entitled to or whatnot. Like we're very getting scared very with that conscientious of that. Yeah, yeah. man, it's, it's like important. you know they put in their time, they fucking busted their ass. Like you know, I, I remember one thing that made me laugh um, when we were touring like animals after when we were three piece for a while. When we were uh, a three piece, uh, I remember one point it was kind of like I think this is around the time where like the mood started to, you know, it was like on an upswing, like between uh, Juan and us. It was just like, we're like, all right, dude, you know, so, you know, we're, I think it's like the one royalty check we got from Robotic. We, uh, <laughs> you know, we're talking to Juan about it. He's like, yeah, man. He goes, yeah, man, that's cool. I mean, I have so many fucking copies of In Return. I don't know what the fuck to do with it. I just have boxes. I think like the, the shit you guys just keep touring, it kept, it keeps being repressed. I have like a room full of LPs that I think I'm going to have forever. <laughs> right. But I don't know. Eventually maybe he still started selling them online. I don't know what he did, but it's like, I think later on it was just switched to like, Hey, we'll just give you, um, you send a check instead of LPs because what are you going to do with that? <laughs> well, yeah. And at a certain point there's, you run out of space to store stuff too. So that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Makes sense. it makes sense. It's sort of like a Oregon trail, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was just funny because it's like when when being when being honest and fair become it, it, it was like compromising his living situation. It's like, dude, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was like fair being fair and equal is taking up space. <laughs> we got to rework this. Yeah, that that's like when um when when operating in an ethical manner is 
actually actively making your standard of living worse, there's a there's a problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe adjust. Yeah. For real. So you know we we've been talking for a while, and I somehow managed to blast right past the uh, the most relevant thing that uh, well, first of all, we're living in the stand, so that's cool. Uh, but yeah, right. <laughs> and in, and and a and a long list of other uh, movies. Yeah, take books. your pick. <laughs> yeah, right. Where it's like shit. We're in it. As as someone who's a fan of uh, dystopian cinema, like it's sort of like, you know, it, it's a bummer, but it's sort of like, oh, I feel like I'm 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 at least somewhat prepared for this. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Really it's, it's like, <laughs> like I've seen how this can pan out. Yeah, I know what not to do, which is important. It's almost as important as knowing what to do. Uh, but exactly. You you guys had quite the time because you were actually out uh, when all this was happening, uh, right? I think you you were in Russia yep. when um, playing shows when they're. It kind of broke big, is that correct? Yeah, I, I mean, it was kind of like it's funny. It it was like you know, what, <laughs> broke big. What are you like, talking about? Never mind. No, you know, when, you know what I mean. Yeah, when right. It came to- <laughs> when it really, when it broke. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll tell you, broke. I know who went broke. We went broke. That's what fucking broke. <laughs> our, our financial situation broke. Hey, broke uh, right uh, in the fuck half. <laughs> but I would say this: it was kind of like you know, in the movies where it's like you know, it's like you know what you're gonna go see. And you know it's planned out so that you you it's designed in you know that form of movie where like it's timestamps dates mm-hmm. you know so you're yeah. like oh shit we're, we're getting to the fucking where when the shit hits the fan like Chernobyl so, or something that, like oh it's about to go yeah, down <laughs> that's pretty much what this trip was so we were skeptic uh, you know skeptical about this whole thing it's a very long it was a seven week trip. And this whole thing starts fucking, you know, going around, literally, I guess. And we are weary, and we get travel insurance for the initial flights, and we set off. And the first stop was leaving Miami March 3rd. Um, we, it was, we, and even, I can even go back just a little bit for uh backstory maybe uh we got together down here we played a string of shows we did a miami show had two or three days off flew up to new york to do a a one show in brooklyn had a travel day off then from miami uh that day off was pretty much just getting in and the next morning we got a rental van the u-haul packed the stuff up and we went on to play saint augustine uh, Savannah, Georgia, and then back down to Orlando, Florida. And, like, talking about it now, I'm like, ah, things are so much simpler then. Yeah, remember, um, remember those old days about a month ago? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it feels like a different time, different life. <laughs> when we so, had things from, to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, where you weren't scared to walk down the street and there was someone else coming your direction. <laughs> You're like, oh. um, yeah, it's like oh man, it's like especially when you're downwind, like in, like walkways, alleys, or streets, you're just like I'm catching everything. Um, but anyway, so and then once that that short trip was done, we had like a week at home, uh, and we take off March third, and we had we were because we have a BBC One radio session, so we go there. That's the beginning. Uh, then from there, we fly to Russia for a show in St. Petersburg and then a show in Moscow. And as we're over there, you know, the UK was pretty mellow uh, as far as the hysteria that was starting to be unleashed here in the States. But it was pretty mellow, but we saw more and more of it throughout our three or four day stay. And then from there, it kind of history repeated itself in, in Russia. It was pretty mellow, but people were nervous. Everyone was still joking about it. You know, it was a very like, ha ha, what if, whatever, what are the chances? And then by the time we got to Moscow, shit got a little more intense, especially the situation in northern Italy. So we got word that uh, Russian Circles, the band we were going to be on tour with over there, their booking agent uh, had holds for alternative uh, shows uh, in place of the Italian shows if things weren't going to clear up, you know? And so we're like, okay, that's that kind of like puts your mind at ease a little bit because the first two weeks or at least going overseas, you're just, you know, paying off all the back line and all the expenses, you know, it's the tickets, all that crap. So it's like, okay, we're, we're just like, maybe 
that maybe this thing isn't so bad, but it <laughs> might hurt us financially if the right. shows don't have good turnouts. You yeah, know, that yeah. was our thing. You're, you're like, thinking more about the fact that who, yeah, if not everybody is showing up because they're scared, then that's going to be like, okay, yeah. that's going to be a, that a different be the experience. Worst of it, yeah. Know? Exactly. So we get, we yeah right laughing now for sure. So we're <laughs> we're wrapping up in Russia, and we get held up in customs, and there's this whole ordeal uh, where uh, we couldn't get through the gates, and I had a carnet for the equipment, and they didn't know what they were doing with it to be honest, and they held me up long enough so that we missed our flight from. Uh, from Moscow to Thelonosoniki. Uh, I'm going to murder that name, too, here. Thelonosoniki. Don't worry. I'm uh, the one going to get emails about it, not you. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and then he's like, what is this? I listen from Greece. This is garbage. Um, so we uh, we fucking missed that shit, and it was like, ooh. It was a, and that night, it was a sh- the, the morning of the day which in which we had that first show. So we automatically... Uh, we sent Steve off. I mean, uh, these guys did. I was on the other side of uh, passport control. They sent him to make, to, you know, in case the luggage would need to be transferred or whatever. So he's off to Frankfurt to connect to make it to a show that we'll never play. Oh, and man. then we we start figuring it out. We find out that our luggage never left Moscow because they pulled it off. And we're like, this. the only reality here is to fly to Athens and make up that show later in the year, hopefully, uh, and then have buy a ticket for Steve. So by the time Steve lands, there's a whole other reality to his life left to be lived, right. which is get your ass to this plane. We're going to Athens a day early, and we're, we'll take it from there. Yeah, you're, you're, and, in the, you're in the wrong area of the world right now. <laughs> we yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going right, and, and also we're headed to the fucking – the wrong area of the world in a whole other respect, I guess. Yeah, yeah, say. exactly. Like, as far, <laughs> multiple, as far as, multiple definitions. You know, <laughs> exactly. And it's just like, as we're getting closer to starting this European tour, things are starting to get more and more nuts. People are freaking out. People back home are asking a bunch of questions. Us in our mind is like, I read this fucking email a month ago. Should we have even done this? Yeah. And it's but just you don't like, know, because information... sometimes you see stuff like an advisory and you're like, oh yeah, okay, cool, whatever. You don't think exactly, much about and we 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 have a history with this shit, man. We fucking toured when the H one N one swine flu thing was yep. kicking. We fucking toured when it was these crazy blackouts in the northeast. We've yep. toured when there's been multiple snipers on both coasts. It's just like <laughs> this is just part of it, apparently. And right. it's, it's, uh, this is what when, happens when you live the life, and that's exactly. Kind of and you're just it, it's um, yeah, it's just like it's a you're a magnet for it. It's so like, uh, we, remember, we remember sort Paper that Boy, out. the video game Paper Boy. It's like it's like that. Oh but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bands. Yeah, for real. And sometimes that old woman with the uh, rolling pins coming after your ass, and she's gonna get you mm-hmm. if you if you don't know, <laughs> if you don't put on. Except, the I mean, I, I feel like <laughs> so, another thing to add to that is like well, being in a band. Sometimes is like smacking yourself on the head with a fucking newspaper, <laughs> and almost and like <laughs> running yourself over with a bike continuously at the just same like, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're there. We we uh, it's now like maybe ten a.m. We were dropped off at the airport at like three a.m. And the kicker is, before all this shit was set into motion with the, the passport delay and all this crap, the, uh, we were never advised uh, as to our flights being changed, canceled, and changed. So it was just like a long day, and it hadn't even started. Right. And so we miss all this shit. Whatever. It's ten in the morning. Our flight to Athens isn't until eight p.m. So we eat food that's maybe not so great at the Moscow airport, and they have like these sleeping bunks. So we're like, "Fuck it, man. Let's just stuff that you wouldn't maybe um, invest in, in regular situation when, when you were, <laughs> or when you were younger. Right, like it's right. just like the younger touring person would be like, "Fuck that, man. Let's I'm not to... spending forty bucks." We were mid thirties. Yeah, definitely spending forty bucks to sleep for fucking six hours. Yeah, rather than spending so, that forty bucks going to the bar or whatever, you're giving me like a nap. Yeah, sounds yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we're like, dude, this sounds great. We're gonna eat, go to sleep, right. wake up, eat, and then fucking funny, uh, finally, finally fly out of here. So you know that was pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, we fly to Athens. And, uh, we have accommodations. Meanwhile, like we're trying to keep both our management and promoter and everybody like informed um, our tour manager driver to be that's in Prague, keeping him informed of what's going on. And this is like the longest day, 3 a.m. 
landing in waking up. I mean, uh, getting dropped off at the airport 3 a.m. after like laying down awake for two hours after a show in Moscow, getting dropped off at 3 a.m., flying out at 8 p.m., landing in Athens at midnight. Uh, and then, you know, and Steve was there, everything's cool. And I get a fucking text, bad news from our tour manager. And I'm like, this ain't good. Because at this point, <laughs> the shit in Italy, Italy is popping off. Right. There's word of, like, not allowing gatherings of 100 or more people. Yeah. I, the, pre, the pre-sales for, what was it, for Paris. and Ant- The first show was to be in Antwerp after the Athens show. So we're, this is two days before this tour starts officially. Um, last day of our kind of solo sporadic date thing that we're doing. The Antwerp show and the Paris show were pre-sales were, like, 1,100. So it was, like... This sh- it would have been great, but this shit is not happening at all. And a promoter is going to put on a show that's not even going to cover yeah. the freaking buyouts or in like the expenses of the evening. Yeah, or whatever, he's going to lose know? money hand over fist just by yeah, putting on the show. Yeah, just, oh, it sounds great. It was just like <laughs> we're we're all like we're here. I'm like, you know, we're making the best of it, trying to find the best places to eat and go sightseeing. But it's like this shit's gonna something's not gonna. It's just something's not right, and it's in the air, and yeah. it's not only the coronavirus, it's the financial tragedy that are with us that we yeah. know is inev- inevitable. So I call our tour manager, and I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, hey, we're uh, curious, and we are now in Greece. And he was like, <laughs> all right, well, did are, you hear? <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right, did you hear anything? And I'm like, no. He's like, all right, tour's been canceled. I'm like, Oh. Fucking knew it. I'm like, I can't, I had this feeling. He's like, yeah, the tour is done. Which, in that simple statement, what it means is like, you guys are easily out yeah. eight to twelve, fifteen grand, yeah. and you need to figure some shit out because you now need to come up with seven weeks worth of work. Yeah, you know. Yeah, where's, like, that you know, where's, where's, where's that bailout? Where's 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 that bailout money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's called taking. It's called leaving the mortgage payment at home before your ass leaves the country. <laughs> right. But you know, it was just like, God damn! I was like, all right, well, I kind of knew that was going to happen. So then I started spreading the news, and everyone's just like, in a momentary like disbelief that lasts like it's maybe shocked. several milliseconds. Yeah, and then it's like, yeah, all right, so. We're going home. (laughs) And it was like, well, we're going to play tomorrow, and then we're going to take it from there. And we rolled into Athens. Our friends I had got were playing down the street from the hotel. We're actually both staying at the same hotel. Um, We hung out with them till like, four in in the morning, five in the morning. And the next day was just kind of like, have fun, eat, be merry during the day, and play your last show (laughs) tomorrow night. and. Let's see how it goes. And it was just like people were telling us we should fly to Antwerp and fly from there. But it was like we don't want we didn't want to fly to anywhere that maybe they were going to close down airports or hold us in, in right. uh, quarantine. Stuck there and Lord, yeah. <laughs> Lord knows what And happens. like, yeah. And it's just like, you know what? Those, we would have to book flights from Antwerp. You know, it's like honoring the promoter that was going to fly us from Athens to Antwerp, it's like, look, you know, yeah, those six are bought, maybe he can try to get that money back, but it makes no sense to eat, take up a whole nother day and use money out of the band fund <laughs> to fly home from a yeah, from a place that costs at least twice as much. We can fly home from here. Yeah. And so we played the show. It was pretty cool. It was, unfortunately, it was the day where apparently, like, in Greece, it was pretty relaxed, but the day of our show was a day where people finally snapped like all the media when it, when it all, all the shit just... yeah man yeah like it's yeah. it's not, not to interrupt but it, no. not on the same level at all but in the states the same thing happened where like they made the announcement like that afternoon and like dude like talk about a non-party vibe <laughs> like everyone yeah. is just like standing around looking terrified at these shows yeah and it's we like, really like got Trump through two of them. all over again <laughs> what i know yeah totally right yeah and and we only got through like two of them for me to uh, cancel all these, huh. and and it's, but the I've never like even after nine eleven I've never seen a vibe that was just that just like this yeah. ponderous and kind of like scared. Yeah, because one thing is like shit, shit, like all right, 
it's just so much at once. It's like, okay, there's this shit. It could kill you. And if it doesn't kill you and you carry it, it can kill those It'll kill who people you, you love. It <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, we're closing down the fucking country. Right. Oh, you need to get home by midnight this day. Luckily, our flights were like at 8 p.m., uh, four hours prior to the uh, the travel ban. But we didn't get any sort of like temperature screening or anything like that at um, MIA. But I think there were one of three airports that powered through and like were accepting uh, flights from abroad. And it was just like, you know, I definitely was thinking, all right, so we're flying out of Athens. And then at first it was looking like it was, but then to save $1,000 each, it was like, oh, guess what? You need to fly back to Russia. And we're like, well, no. <laughs> we were, we spent, because we spent so much time by 3 a.m. to 8 p.m. Like, no, no, no. I just want to, like, stay in Athens and fly out of here. Like, did, you know, did which anybody, we've done in the past. Did anybody on Team Torch dare hum back in the USSR at any point? <laughs> No, what, no, 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 I mean, we were playing it cool. We were having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing a good time, and everyone was cool. Everyone was, everyone was happy. Uh, it, it, it's a very inter- interesting place to uh, travel to. Yeah. Um, where, but where, so at, where in Russia was it? Which, which airport? I mean, if you don't want to uh, say. Uh, SVO, and I'll never forget that acronym. I'm like, we spent so much time there. The second time we flew back after Athens, we left Athens at uh, like 10.50 or something like that, and we were there till 2 p.m. the next day where our flight took off. Oof. Yeah, dude. Back to the sleeping box is all I got to say. <laughs> uh, and it's like, and, and also like you're signing waivers because it's like, oh, if you caught it here, it's not our fault, but you're so tired. You're like, man, fuck, I don't mm-hmm. want to sit upright trying to... It's like what's Signing better being out legal with paperwork at the same time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, it's Russia. I don't think shit would matter. Like, to, if an American citizen had a problem anyway, yeah, yeah with yeah. something like uh, somebody um, have a dashboard cam because that's like the level of engagement. With <laughs> you guys. For real, for real. But I'll I'll say this: it was just like it was an interesting trip, but uh, the whole thing with. You're not knowing if you're going to be back in, if you're going to be held in quarantine for fucking 12 days or whatever it is, yeah, sent back. Yeah. And it's just, what if we go to Russia and we're held there? Like, I'd rather be in Athens, to be quite honest. <laughs> right. And, you know. <laughs> Between the two but, of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, no, we got in and it was fine. And, I mean, it's day six. I don't feel bad. I don't feel anything just yet. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I've been, you know, I feel like it's it's a response to... Just everything around you, you kind of self-diagnose and you kind of like start questioning everything, you know, a little bit. It kind of gets you at some point, you know, whether you're like playing it down and like bottoms up or like trying to remain healthy and, you know, whatever. But I don't know. I, I It's been pretty, just been hanging out with my girlfriend and the, and the dogs, um, o- only going out for supplies if we need any anything. We're all like pretty stocked up now. And I mean, part of it, part of me is just like, man is this shit real like what the fuck but it's like yeah i'm not trying to roll the dice either you know well because you have you know certain news sources that are being like oh well they're exaggerating it and even if they weren't it came exclusively from china and it's their fault and it's also the failure of government too and it's like well hold on pick a conspiracy man like just pick a lane yeah but i mean the <laughs> idea that like you can have you know people are like voting in, in primary elections where, where it's like do we really think that's a good idea Right, <laughs> right now, I mean, this thing grows exponentially, yeah. and even if it's like not quite as insane as they say it is, like we're you know a few months behind these other countries, and like they managed to contain their outbreak because they took extreme measures. And if not everybody's exactly. doing it, I mean, it's going to get way worse and have multiple waves of it. Yep, and also the whole like the what is it they're saying? I mean, as far as yesterday. I mean, me and my girlfriend yesterday we were like cleaning the apartment, doing all sorts of stuff, and listening to NPR. And you know, on the hour, every hour, I think it's like do 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 the you know BBC broadcast or uh, what uh, you know the news comes in, yeah. and it's just kind of like, what's the fucking latest? Where are we at now? Yeah, like, how shit? bad is and it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's the mentality, you know. And um, it's it's uh, it's it's really affected. It it's for people that rely on being around people, being outside, being on the road. I mean, for me and our, and us, it was like, all right, tour's done. Shit. 
okay, I need to record bands. People right. aren't trying to hang no, out, so not recording to rec- bands. Nobody's trying to you record know? a record right now, yeah. Or if they are, they're yeah. doing it Luckily, at home. <laughs> for real. I mean, and that's what happened. I had a band that sent me, they sent me like a test thing, and I'm like, yep, it's fine off. Everything's good. You guys are doing a great job. And basically, they're recording everything, and then they're having me reamp the direct guitar <laughs> tracks and then mix right. the record. Okay. So that's where we're living. I mean, right. to be honest, I've seen some memes and shit that crack me up because it's, I mean, that's when you laugh the most, when you connect to something, right? When it's your reality yeah. through somebody else's vision or whatever. And it's so funny. This honestly does not change my lifestyle. Like, it doesn't. I'm right. either with the dogs, hanging out. The only thing I haven't done is go down to the Everglades out there, you know, and go hang out with fucking gators and snakes or whatnot. But... Honestly, I'm in my the studio. I'm working here. I'm just a very low key person. I'm not out, you know, schmoozing or rubbing elbows or whatever the fuck yeah. you want to call it. Like, right, right. I just it's not what I do. So to be honest, it's like this shit doesn't really affect me. Am I a little like cautious? Like if I hear a yeah. cough, fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> and if somebody if I'm walking the we're walking the dogs and there's people walking, I'm just like. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, this is very low key. Clear. Walk across the street here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, man. I'm like, I just don't want to be that one guy. And in fact, um, my oh, girlfriend, no. um, uh, she's a tattoo artist, and uh, her her secretary or organizer of sorts, uh, she actually has it. She has it, and she's in Berlin. She moved to Berlin like ten days ago, and she has all the symptoms. She called like many people called the hospital or whatnot and they're like okay we need you to self-quarantine um by such such date if you're not better that's when you need to call back and follow up yeah but um according to her she's saying that ibuprofen actually made it way worse right but tylenol helped her and it's just like the shortness of breath thing that's really scary migraines that last day into day into day out you know um but i think she was feeling better and then on the other uh, side in here in the U.S., um, her sister, who's uh, uh, going to school, and she's actually a resident. She's um, pursuing OBGYN mm. as mm-hmm. a career. So they, uh, she was really upset at how Emory uh, down in uh, Atlanta was treating the residents. They were just having them on hand, not doing anything, and sticking them in like a uh, really compromising situations like in ICUs where people did have it and people were dying, you know, and it's just like fucking, it just makes you like, it's like, dude, can we have organization? Can we plan accordingly? Like, first of all, this is the health care system. Like whoever's planning, there is planning (laughs) very poorly. And then if there's planning at all, the planning is is poor. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then like, yeah, it's just like getting, it's just like, we need to keep stay with it. We need to, we need to really be diligent with our moves, pay attention, and think, and not miss any of these steps that can really cause a domino effect. You know, so it's like her sister is now has some symptoms. She's waiting it out, quarantining up there in Atlanta. So I guess it becomes there's a certain wave of reality that hits you when you're just when it becomes closer. It's just like anything else, you know, like when you hear of something you're like man that's terrible and then that something terrible happens within your social circle your family your friends everything that you know to be it your makes personal it more real world. yeah for yeah, obvious reasons it's like, oh, okay. yeah cuz it's like okay this is not some sort of bs that is being thrown around so Johnson Johnson can make a lot of money in several months. It's just like, right. oh shit, this is happening. It's it's not a vague concept, it's something that's attached to a human being that you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's um you know, it's a it's a wild time to be doing much of anything too because you just have that almost innate suspicion of anyone you see just in in daily For real? life. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, it's a time crazy. it's a time where smokers cough is really scary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody coughs. I was I was doing the uh, after we got back, I was doing the thing where I went to the, you know, the grocery store to pick up the stuff and you know, like went kind of late to avoid the crowds and there were still like crazy yeah. crowd like lines all the way around the store never seen so many people no rice to be found at all like really weird arbitrary things that they were out of 
but yeah, yeah, some dude like in line coughed and everybody practically like jumped two feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> even though everybody was like you know whatever four to six feet away from each other like everyone was like sort of like whoa like looking at each other like oh crap <laughs> like it's like what's up at that moment you ask yourself was that toilet paper really worth it right exactly it's like remember in like in like 28 days later like zombie movies or something where somebody like sh- yeah. first starts showing symptoms and then it happens and everyone's like oh crap you know it's, it's sort of like it was that sort of vibes yeah you know, over by the ice Dude, that's what it, <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. It's like, what comes after this? And then when the fucking, these vaccines are released into the world, what are, what's going to be the side effects or what's going to happen? You know, what are they going to cause? It's, it's just, man, it's wild. Wild times. This is something I've never experienced before, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of like, is the, you know, is the cure going to be worse than the disease? Like, what happens next? What does this mutate into? Like, how long are we going to be dealing exactly. with this? Like, is this, is this just how it is now? Like, everyone's going to be yeah. looping pedals and drum machines and, like, live streaming crap? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's going to be live streaming performances. And, like, I don't know. It's just going to be wild, man. I mean, it is interesting to see um, at least several or at least, I would say a couple of uh, uh, like uh, musician or artist um, assistance programs that are being passed around. Like, yeah, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of interesting, you know. And like, I I don't know. It's 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 definitely like even with with um, you know on our management and stuff. Like we're putting up stuff, you know, like a yeah. A you put up the the, the, the the was it part time punks thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is cool, and that's something that hopefully can raise a little revenue for you guys, especially since... Yeah, and it's just, like, with me, and, like, we, you know, we we have we definitely have plenty of merch available <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was never yeah. never made it out the fucking door. <laughs> but it's just kind of, like, for me, I guess maybe I'm a little too critical, but I just, like, don't want it to seem like we're coming off as, like, needy or 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 like demanding or begging even it's just like we're just kind of fucked and if you if you are interested in any of this shit we got some of it but it's like it's kind of scary to think that like there's some people out there that are in a rough situation where they can't afford to stay home and isolate i mean if you feel bad hopefully i mean you you should just do it but it's kind of like are people going to be losing homes and jobs and it's like where did this you know now there's talks of pecs being mailed out it's like it's just a lot of information from a lot of different directions all being thrown out at once yeah i mean we're talking about like a fundamental restructuring of society whereas you know you really kind of have masks off with who's getting the support and who's getting bailed out <laughs> right now yeah right it's just like oh we're gonna bail out American Airlines, yeah, shit, dude, great. they fucking cleared a $7.6 billion profit in 2017. Like, what's going on? Yeah, like, how yeah. about the people that are fucked? <laughs> how about bailing out our, uh, our our friends, the bartender down the street, or, you know, touring musician that's, like, totally screwed right now for the immediate future? Yeah, and now, like, think about, like, service industry, like, uh, you know, servers, bar, you know, like you mentioned bartenders, just... I think it's kind of like spreading now where at least in larger metropolitan areas, it's like, if you're not a necessary business, yeah, you're not you're going to be open. So it's just like, okay, so uh, pharmacy, uh, uh, essential fucking, services, like, uh, I mean, I guess you got to include grocery stores in there, right? Yeah. Gro- yeah. Definitely grocery stores and pharmacies are at the top of the list. And then I guess after that comes like, uh, sort of like, I don't know, like, uh, what would you call it? Like, uh, health, uh, public, uh, God damn it. Public works. Uh, like garbage. Yeah, public and, works. Like, like uh, sewer. Yeah, and, stuff yeah. like, and also, like, um, people that are dealing with, uh, old, older people, like, um, Hospice you know, caretakers. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, fuck. and then the people that keep track of getting people, like, necessary, um, meds and stuff like that, like public health care workers and shit. It's just, but I feel like things slow down down here a lot, but I would say that today I kind of like noticed on my way over to the studio, I guess I was one of them, but I'm isolating in between uh, my driving time uh, or at both ends of my driving time, um, 
there seem to be like people out. Like people are just—I don't know if they're restless. I don't know if they're like I can't afford to be home. I need to work. So there's kind of like because there was a wave of people that were like kind of like not believing it either, you know. But right, there yeah. seems like to be. <laughs> yeah, and I and that's the scary part, dude. They're saying like the the the, um, the driving force between spreading this shit is young people and down yeah. here on a fucking spring break and shit like that. Like, I know that some beaches are closed and yep. others, like, uh, up in Tampa, like, Clearwater Beach is not. And it's just, like, so, tons of young people doing young people stuff. So, you know so, what I mean? So, like, two, two quick stories. Uh, the, uh, my friend Jeff Helland, who runs No Coast Fest down in Arlington and plays in the band Horries and played in White Drugs, he was mm-hmm. like, he's like, yeah, basically, other than some restaurants and bars, like everyone's kind of going about their daily lives as if none of this is happening. And I was like, Oh, well, fuck. and then yeah. on that same tip, you know, that, you know, I'm a Bay area guy, but I live in Wisconsin. I will say that a lot of people really didn't treat it seriously until they shut down the bars, which is such a Wisconsin thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. like, you know, the joke is everybody's like drunk and it's like, Oh shit. It's time. real. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe better pay attention now. And it's like, Oh, you weren't going to pay attention before. Because you can't get freaking wasted on a Tuesday, like now it's a big deal. Okay, I feel like it was smart <laughs> to, um, like, biz- like I feel like even before, I mean, and that's maybe what caused the idea to spread pretty widely is, uh, food service, uh, like businesses, restaurants, or whatnot, were saying, hey, we're open, but pick up only delivery. A lot of places were wavering, right. waving. It's like risk mitigation fee. almost. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're mitigating exposure. Yep, and if it's not done like that, it's like you're putting everybody in fucking compromise, and it's a matter of time before you could literally like trace backwards. Like, okay, well, we had this, right? Uh, you chose yeah. to do this, <laughs> and then nine fucking grandmas got it. You know? Yeah, like we, we were we were on the way to Minneapolis, and we stopped like you know whatever a freaking quick trip or something along those lines, and they had like yeah. two people that was that were literally just going around and like wiping down all the handles on the yeah. <laughs> on the things like after everyone, and I was like, you know what? That actually makes sense. Like it seems like you know kind of funny at first, but it's like no, that's actually probably the right move because. I mean, what are you going to do? You can't close it like entirely, but like you, and, and that's back when before they were like, um, actually maybe not so Shit much with social congregation. Real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what changed everything when shit got yeah. realer than real. Yeah. And that, that was just like, yeah, just weird funereal vibes all around and being like, okay, well, huh. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah, it's just, it, I, I feel like, you know, there's, there's, I mean, I I feel like maybe less now than in the recent years than ever, but maybe this shit's going to bring it back. But I used to be pretty, like, OCD with shit like that and germophobe oh, that, like, and stuff. Like germs and, and things along those lines? Yeah. It's just like, I like my shit. I like my DNA. Let's keep your shit away from mine. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know what you're doing. Yours. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Like, your DNA was, can be over my, there. My DNA will be over yeah, here yeah. and everything will be just fine. Yeah. Yeah, just do your thing. I'll do mine. Back up. <laughs> my DNA um, is going to swing its arms like this, and if you happen to get away yeah. with my DNA, it's not my. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but what I was going to say was the like you have to have these people that clean things because it just takes like some careless people, one, some just sort of one dick is all. It takes. Yeah, and one flip up, one not guy's literally. like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean. It probably will be at least a person <laughs> with one of those that will do it. But that's just my idea. Uh, but, um, yeah, I just feel like it's a, it's a matter of time before this shit just, like, either, like, damn, shit got better. Great. Yeah. And then I'll see, I'll see you next fall or winter. Yeah. Or, like, damn, we're fucking, this shit is, like, locked down, National Guard is going to be rolling yeah. around. I, I mean, I heard, I heard something. I don't know if this shit is real. But my friend today told me that they're welding people's doors shut in China. What? That doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like numbers are dropping. You know what I mean? Oh, it's just like th- so. Do you think? It, and this, I guess, might be where I put my tinfoil hat on. But do you think it might be something where, like, the government's like saying one thing, like, "Oh no, no, everything's fine," and yep. then, like, you know, just taking into account the fact that like the people themselves can't actually report on shit because they don't have a free media. No, I think Ooh. I do. I think that that could be the reality. 
so much so. <laughs> and not only there, but here. I hear that there was like yeah. some grass. I saw some charts and shit like that where like then it was like and then the number then the correct numbers were reported. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like I know it's kinda of like a sick person census, so it's not gonna be like dead on and there's gonna but I just feel man, numbers are being curved. I think that's a, it could be. It could be. You know, like it it could be a reality. And when you're dealing with something that literally <laughs> grows exponentially too, you know, it's sort of like what what's yeah. true yesterday is not true today. I mean, just you know, speaking personally, like our our whole move for like what we were gonna do like changed in the course of like twelve freaking hours of just like okay, this has gotten yep. like nuts, and like this is a totally different scenario than when we last talked about this. So we need to like figure out what what's what and who's who here. And that's um yeah. So did you find that like um getting back to I guess lighter fare. Uh, that that show in Greece, like the, that last show you played, like was any of that vibe there? Like where people like kind of yeah, a little I bit? Fe- yeah. I feel like, and it's kind of funny. One of the dudes now it came out a promoter that had worked with us in the past. You know, last time we were there, actually, was like, man, what's going on? Last time we did a show with you guys, they, we had protests and they shut down the public transportation. <laughs> now there's this. And I'm like, holy shit! I'm like, now just. You know, and attest to what I was saying earlier. But the um, they said that that was it was the day that the people finally like everyone. I was like, no, nah, it's cool. It's gonna get better. You know, we just gotta relax. You know, whatever. That was the day that the, like pretty much the panic hit. Oh, hell and like I think yeah. I think half half. I'm not sure. I might be mixing up my information here, but I think it could be. <clears throat> excuse me. That half the people that bought tickets showed up oh, jesus i mean like it that's that yeah. that matches with what i saw in the states you know but like on a much grander yeah. scale i'm sure that i mean it's nuts man like I, I i the last show i saw before we left was shellac and like that was like right as stuff was starting to bust loose and it was great yeah. but can you like, kind of see it can you feel it like, i could totally you know, like- see that i'm like this place would be like twice as packed if this wasn't happening like guaranteed like people are not going to miss shellac playing milwaukee you know like there's no freaking chance yeah and and also oof. just being there i mean i feel like there's people there that are like they're there but they're freaking out oh you no know? for and, sure or, like, you can feel it you can feel it like <laughs> totally. everyone's just kind of waiting am i going to hear somebody next to me cough when this guy is strumming yeah. a twang ass guitar like i i did i did notice before you know, social distancing, social distancing, like social lightning mm-hmm. bolt distancing, <laughs> yeah. was was a thing. Uh, I, I was definitely starting to notice. I'm like, oh wow, it's people are like really spread out at this. You know, I was was you know wasn't freaking. Oh, make, I wasn't making the connection, but it's like, oh, of course they are. Yeah, they're yeah, freaking yeah. scared of getting infected from the freaking Captain Trips. <laughs> I didn't even think yeah. about that. <laughs> Dude, I mean, nobody wants to be that one. No one wants to like be in a fucking str- in a bed or stretcher or self quarantining, where there's not enough to test you, um, oh, not and, you know not enough kits. Uh, kits rather, you're freaking out. You feel like you're fucking you know in the 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 one that's dying in a zombie movie or converting yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, you're you're the guy that got bit and then like is trying to hide it yeah. from everyone. <laughs> And it was like, and in those terms, it's like, it was voluntary because you went to the fucking show. Yeah, 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 exactly. And you have no one but yourself to blame. And like a bunch of people are going to die because of you. Congratulations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, it's just interesting times. And it's just. That's quite the hole we've dug ourselves into. (laughs) For real. It's just like, dude, whoops. Uh, Maybe don't. I mean, if, if it did come from China. Maybe don't stack. You know, they were coming down hard on, like, those. And, I mean, I don't fucking eat anything with the damn heartbeat. So maybe I'm fucking, you know, I'm not trying to rant or anything because I'm not that type of person. But animal cruelty sucks. It's awful. It's evil. But when and you have, like, fucking crates upon crates stacked on top of each other with animals in poor health that are pissing, shitting, bleeding on each other. What do you think is going to fucking happen yeah. if if it is where it came from? You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. that sounds like a recipe for disaster on its own. Yeah, you know, this, this doesn't sound like a good time at the at, at the very least and definitely a recipe for bad news otherwise. Yeah. So, I mean, it's either that or somebody in a fucking lab got paid a lot of money to create this shit and damn, they did a great job. 
<laughs> right. Exactly. We're we're in the, yeah. uh, the the third act of uh, you know the the, the yeah. movie, and the, the hero is yet to find out the conspiracy. Yeah, it's like, and then the gates opened. Yeah, the gates to hell. <laughs> Dude, it's 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 a it's a wild time to. Well, it's a wild time to be alive, I guess. It's a wild time to be like doing yeah. anything, and that's kind of like one of the reasons why I was I'm just doing a lot of these shows because it's like, well, I can do this. <laughs> Definitely, and it's interesting to see perspectives on people uh, on the, everything that's going on, how people are caring about their day to day lives. I mean, some people might be freaking out somewhere, and they might be into a small band like mine, and maybe though that this is helping them relax. Yeah. Maybe it's giving them more anxiety, and I'm sorry if it is, <laughs> but it's just like. It was not I, the I take it effect. all in, man. Yeah, exactly. yeah, right. I'm like, oh, my bad, dude. Sorry, Papa Zanac. We didn't something. know. We didn't but, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For mature audiences only, <laughs> or immature audiences only. But um, I just feel like there's. I, I always entertain every perspective, every angle. I mean, I'm all about conspiracy theories and shit like that. At, at least as far as like taking them in and I guess enjoying the the idea behind them Mm -hmm. whether or not i believe them or i'm like all right this is crap it's more about like the fascination of it all you know like trying yeah finding explanations for things that deserve to have explanations but maybe like doing these specious and crazy jumps in logic to get there exactly sometimes it's like okay that was a steep jump (laughs) right (laughs) you know that was a large gap i don't know if you really got to the other side of reality on that one but i don't know i just feel like Regardless if this shit is fucking as lethal as the state is, I mean, I, by degree of separation of one, have heard, I guess, secondhand that this shit is fucking real. And it's hit, you know, people that I'm, you know, close to, and you are nervous because the one thing that's freaking people out is you can really find out in the worst way possible if you have any underlying health issues. Yeah, and, if you have grandparents or, like, parents that are at yeah. risk, I mean, it's not just, like, your health. It's, like, you're literally potentially going to kill people close to you. Yeah, man, that's fucking crazy. That's, <laughs> just like, wild. <laughs> can you imagine that? Talk about, like, get, like the most ultimate guilt on your fucking, yeah. <laughs> just a weight on your shoulders. To oh, Jonathan, such, you. such a nice guy, except for the fact that he killed grandma and, and his auntie. For real, you know? man. <laughs> <laughs> I only got one left. I'm not. I'm not getting too close to her. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? There was a funny. Um. It was a. It was actually is Max Brooks who uh, wrote that World War Z book that they turned into the movie with Brad Pitt with all the the zombies and whatnot. Uh, and he's yeah. done other stuff too, but that's the thing. Like I like best by him, so that's therefore what he's known as. Uh, yeah. And he's, he's Mel Brooks' son. And they did okay. like they did this quick video that like he was talking about how like basically stay the hell away from your parents and your grandparents right now, because it isn't about you. It's about the fact that you could possibly infect them. And like Mel Brooks comes up and he's like behind like the sliding glass door. And he's like, yeah, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty yeah, funny. I and mean, I feel like it, it's really, it's really important, you know? And I think this is a time, me and my friend were talking about it for a little while today. This is a time where we really see, the, what? How much bad a selfish person can really do? You know yeah. how much harm they they can cause. Yeah, you're, I think you're onto something with that. And yeah, <sighs> scary. It it is, and I mean, do you have? It's any... just like it's just the way the way my brain works. Um, is like okay, you're out. You're a party guy. You're a social guy. You have no fucking business being anywhere. You're not working. You're not doing shit. You're gonna go have a beer. Oh shit, the bars aren't available. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do something. I'm gonna go see, and get into some shit. Or that's you know one scenario. You're out. You're spreading it. You may catch it and then carry it on because you're a continued path throughout the town or whatever city. Now, if you catch it, here's another scenario. Okay, I coughed on my fucking hand or whatever. I you know I go pump gas. I open a door at a oh, store. Dude, yeah. I you know what I mean. It's just yeah, like yeah. dude. It's just. I mean, it's hard I not to think and, uh, of those scenarios too, too, when you're doing just even yeah. the most mundane activities of like, fuck, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like even vote, even voting. You know, like yep. just going to vote yesterday. Uh, I took I took um, the glove and some some hand hand sanitizer was yeah. readily available uh, in the van and went in 
and you know, some people are protected, some aren't. The lady saw I came in with the gloves uh, that was handing out the initial ballot and doing the registry, and she put on gloves too. It's just I feel like some people might not, you know, they might not if think you're about out and you're around. Yeah, or they might feel like the pressure, but I feel like certain people are not really too worried about putting shit on at this point. Like, I'm going to slap it on. And I think we're, we're like a week past that. <laughs> but other people yeah. might feel like, you know, you know, like, oh, I don't want to do that. I feel silly. It's like, I'd rather feel alive than fucking Yeah, I was going to say, dead. you know what, man? I'll look silly for five minutes and live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about that? For real. And everyone that I love I'll, around me will live as well. Yeah, I'll live to be silly another day. Yeah, exactly. I I, I don't mind. I don't mind looking at... Look, I've looked absurd for far less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's for free, way. probably, exactly. just like any other musician. <laughs> it costs me to look silly. Yeah, exactly. I actually paid to be absurd in front of strangers. <laughs> exactly. And I didn't even protect anyone from sickness. Mm-hmm. Damn, dude. I feel I feel like I mean this is all very relevant and I think that, you know, it's it's gonna be of, of use for everyone, but like it's I feel like this is a pretty dark hole that we've we've dug ourselves into. Um Yeah, man. I feel like it ties into other things too, like It does. The more we the more we fuck with nature, the she just reminds us like, all right, we suck at this fucking catastrophic yeah. dick. I don't yeah, know. This this is this is a hold my beer moment, to be sure. <laughs> this is definitely Yeah. yeah. Uh Okay, so let's see. You see, guys did not. We'll, we'll go and charitably say that this did not do financial wonders for you um, no. as as a band. Um, if people go to the Torch Bandcamp, there's that part time punk sessions. People can uh, buy a digital copy of that, right? I think Bandcamp. Yeah, the the way it's set up, I think is like you can listen to it. It's free, you know, whatever. And if you feel like shooting something, you can. And it's uh, by. Uh, you know, what you want, your donation. Of of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that type of thing. Yeah. And uh, Bandcamp's doing the thing uh, at, at the time of this recording. You know, if you're listening to it later, oh, yeah, it, yeah. it may not be true. Where they're they're waiving all their fees for it uh, tomorrow, which is uh, three uh, twenty, right? Yeah, uh, March twentieth. And a greater share goes to the artists, and they're doing that uh, globally. So if if people are listening that wanted to pick that up and you know throw a throw a shekel or two. Yeah, Wait man, whatever, some you know, I, or, to be, to <laughs> be honest, like, even wishing. if you just want to, yeah, just check it out, listen to it, you know, if you're into it or whatever, cool. But it, I am, I am into it. It was cool um, to, to uh, be a part of the part-time punk thing. Uh, I got hit to that show while living in LA. I will listen to it often, if not weekly. It's and, a KXLU uh, it was cool thing, to be a right? part of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They have an amazing yeah. live room. That live room is so great. Well, we went, we, yeah, we went to the, um, Josiah's place and, uh, he told us stories about working with some, um, the Jesus and Mary chain people and all this stuff. And it was a cool, like, I feel like it, the songs that we, that they suggested, I feel were super like, duh, of course it's, it, it, uh, you know, fit in with the, um, the vibe of the show and having played there with, and like just the lighting, everything was just like really bringing out the dreamier kind of darker vibe in these songs that have more ambient and washy parts. Yeah. Um, so I think it really came across in a cool way. Um, I was able to mix it, so that was fun. And I just kept it like nice and raw, uh, and true to the, what it sounded like and what it felt like in the room. Uh, so, I mean, some people have said some nice things and, uh, it's just cool. It really, um, embellishes the the feeling of uh the first three songs yeah a lot and the fourth one is kind of a different vibe of it you know? yeah and and these are songs now that you've you've played and you and you've toured yeah, yeah. which is different than mm-hmm. like you know the version of the record which the record versions are are cool as well don't get me wrong but you get a different vibe on it yeah. when it's been a song that's like lived in a live experience mm-hmm. as well which, which is I think, cool i think uh, this on this album we've been able to do a lot more of that uh and also almost like how certain places have microclimates we've done like different versions within the different kind of uh um video recording things we've done we did one with for kerrang we did one for uh amoeba we did another oh, one yeah, for sure. yeah yeah <laughs> chicago music exchange right i feel like it's it's kind of like lent the situations have lent themselves to really um 
influence the performances and the sounds. And I mean, I've been mm. lucky enough to like mix all of them. <laughs> yeah. So I make sure to like really, uh, even like, with, you know, how the mics are placed and all that crap, just kind of like make sure that the actual space is captured and the experience of playing in that space when I pull up the faders and start mixing it, try to get as close to the feeling of having been there on the previous tour, which is kind of funny because we get off the road, I'm at home for like a day or two, and then I'm mixing something. <laughs> that, right, right, right. And you you're trying to like, replicate a live experience for people that have no chance to see it for the immediate future. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was being cool, and I feel like it's cool that um people are picking up on the nuances from these uh, different performances and, you know, the video stuff. People have done some really cool stuff and kind of, you know, they work the, ca the cameras and change the views so none of us feel, like, singled out or too awkward. But uh, it, it's cool when they capture the um, what's happening in a way that translates to viewers and people that want to check it out or have never heard of us. But I feel like right now is a it's cool time. It's a good time. entry point. I think, that, I mean, I've been with you guys... Christ, I guess it's the first record now that I think about it. Like, I was a little bit of a late adopter in the first record, but, you know, I've been okay. there ever since. And, I, I mean, I think it's one of your best records. Easy. Awesome, man. People are really digging it. It's a good place to cool start. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. That doesn't hurt. Um, but I think it's cool that people are checking into all these different versions. Yeah. I think also going back to the previous statement of um, relief and the band camp stuff, Maybe it's just the world that I'm involved in and what surrounds me, but it seems like people are more in tune or feel um, aware of the benefit of giving back or, yeah. you know, community. working with musicians. When, you know, yeah, it's more of a sense of a community and, like, not seeing, you know, musicians as deadbeats, but as some people that, like... <laughs> sacrifice a lot right. to create stuff that other people enjoy you it's, know it's a choice that it's a choice you're making that doesn't necessarily always get you the glory but it provides a, you know. a valuable service that you know for a lot of us freaks nerds and weirdos yeah. we couldn't live without yeah. or would and not I mean, want to live without and i'm not saying that you know we you know we deserve it or anything but it, it's nice that it's it's people are are able to help people are kind of like acknowledging it and they are res res they were respecting it you know because yeah. it's man it's hard to go on the road and like shit does not do well and you're <laughs> fucking broke you need yeah. to figure out how to get some money together it's just there's a lot that goes to it for those 30 minutes to 60 minutes that you're playing it's just like there's so much that goes into being able to do that that it's a balancing like, act. It really is. I mean, yeah, at the best of times. Yeah, and that's without mm -hmm. outbreaks and, you know, worldwide yeah. Panic epidemics. Pandemics. Sorry. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. It, right. And it's just like, yeah, it's like you're on the tightrope at all times. It's, it's like the one thing you do for the best interest of the band might not necessarily be the best interest for you and your life, personal yeah. life, you yeah. know? Well, I guess, you know, getting, getting back um, and it's, it's been great talking to you and, and getting the, the lowdown on the absolutely insane situation that is happening now as, as well as everything else. But uh, getting back to the last record, which, you know, again, it's the first, it's the first one you switch over from bass to guitar. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, uh, it's pretty, the set lists are pretty heavy towards, towards the new record other than the title track. Like what's one that you feel is, uh, you know, really exemplary or like, a, oh, you know, that one, that one's really cool. Like what's one that you, that you think is a, a good representation of what this stage of torch is up to. That's not the title track. Cause we already played that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the, um, um, well, the, the cool thing about this record is that the, <clears throat> it's made up of three songs written by Steve three songs written by Eric and three songs written by myself. And then the other two are group efforts. Oh, wow. So, okay. I did actually yeah. I had no so, idea. That's interesting. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, our friends kind of, it was cool to like, they were, once they heard the record, they're like, Oh, I could totally see who wrote what, you know? And I, yeah. I thought that was real interesting. <laughs> and you know, some people speculate as well, yeah. but I feel that 
it's a hard one because I feel like they're all their own little thing. You know, they're all their own part that make up this this record that we're proud of. But uh, and also they're very. I feel like you can select um, since they're pretty. There's like kind of, there's a continuity in a sonic signature, mm-hmm. but they're pretty different. Um, yeah, it, it plays very well as a record, but there's definitely like a thematic sort of feel to it where it kind of flows one one into the other yeah yeah i would say and also (laughs) though at this point you should do (laughs) yeah right at this point the um the record versions feel so different from the live versions too you know and it's uh it's kind of cool that we've been able to um capture numerous versions of uh playing them live like we were just talking about but maybe what i would have to say i don't know are you an asshole if you say it's the one of the songs that you wrote? No, man. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think be, one that's cool. The only one you'd be an asshole but, about is if you said like, "Well, really, they're all good, and really, you should pick yourself." Because then I'd be like, <laughs> "Man, come on, really." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick well, one. Yeah, the yeah. thing is, I, I I go to I go to all of them for something different. Sure. So yeah, they have different moods, and every um, every every child is unique and special, and uh, you know, yada yada, and yeah. can't pet all the cats, etc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, hmm. With all that being said, in my current mood, mm-hmm. I would say that the closer changes come. Um, it's, <sighs> it's something that's a ripper. I like that one quite a bit. Yeah, awesome, awesome. What was the original? Not, the, question? not that you needed uh, me to <laughs> validate your choice, but <laughs> no, I, it, it it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to hear nice things every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. I just feel like that one definitely. Maybe you know why I chose that one because I heard it, the the actual part time punks version. And that one to me just really kind of hits the hits the mark of how that song translates live, and it may be slightly more minimal mm. as far as like layering of guitars, but maybe because of that, it kind of hits hard in a, in a in this a bolder, way. bolder, larger sound. Well, um, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll we'll play that version of it, so that oh, uh, cool. it, it'll, awesome. it'll be it'll be it'll have relevance. And <laughs> to what you were just talking about. It. <laughs> yeah, I just think like it's just um that song always has a feeling. And even yeah. when we were uh, starting the tour, there was kind of some apprehensions from certain members about playing that, but it's just I feel like from the first the first downbeat of that song, you know, and the guitars come in, it's just like it takes you somewhere. It's like, "Oh shit." the you know the trip has started or whatnot and <laughs> right it, totally. it's kind of it's, it's kind of a it's immediate it's not like a song like um time's missing grows into it and that whole middle session to me is a especially live um has like more of a loop spaceman three vibe in the center of the song but this thing it's like right from the fucking beginning it's just like oh shit this one's different you know, yeah. and it sets it sets a tone in a certain mood. Well, and I always felt that uh, you guys had, you know, while being like a heavy band, you know, there are the serious hooks to it and harmonies and stuff, and there always is that kind of undercurrent of the things I like about shoegaze, I guess, uh, which is to, which is to say the more dreamier aspects of it where it could be raucous and yeah. rocking, but still have kind of like, I, I hesitate to use the word psychedelic cause it's just misused for a bunch oh, of yeah. nonsense, but like, <laughs> well, yeah, in, in the truest sense of the term, uh, you know, almost like, almost like psychedelic sort of aspect to it. And it's, there's not a lot of bands in quote unquote heavy music that really try first of all, but try or can pull that off. And I always thought that was very, that's one of the things that made you guys very unique as a band. And, oh, um, thank you. Yeah. And that, that, you know, I personally always liked, you know, whatever, not that you're ever going to like make millions catering to Kona Neutron, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, fe- I feel, I feel like that one, it was cool to see the immediate reaction with, um, you know, certain people, um, and, Certain people of certain age groups too, you know. Um, I, I yes. saw, I saw, yeah. it, it just like there was, there was a sort of like connection, you know. Totally, and and and, then, uh, and, and that's that's nice. That that's a, that's a nice thing. It's nice to be able to. It, it's almost like a passive community building exercise, to be able to provide mm-hmm. experience for people that way, and that's 
you know, ideally what music should be all about. And as we all know, so frequently is not. Yeah, for <laughs> which, <sure. laughs> which is a bummer, but <laughs> it, mean, it means you got to enjoy the good times all the more. Uh, so last thing, man, I always ask everybody sure. this is uh, why do you do what you do? Uh, Cause I don't know any better. Um, <laughs> because I, I just feel, I just, I don't know, man. I, it's, it's pretty simple for me. I just, it all makes sense when you're fun, when you're playing the stuff live and I mean, it's a whole process really. Like for me, the way I fell into this freaking shit is I just enjoyed playing. And uh, I met someone in seventh grade. They said they had a guitar. I could not believe it. And I went to his house like a day later once he checked in with his mom, it being okay. And cause no one was home, you know, at that, as those hours, he's home before everybody gets home. We're fucking like 11 years old or whatever. So I go over and this guy has his guitar. I'm like, Holy shit. He wasn't lying. And he just, all he had to do was strum a power chord. And that should just like repositioned my interest in what I wanted to do with my time. And around that time I used to, I used to draw like pretty good. But I didn't get into this magnet program, <laughs> so I was like, man, fuck this. So I started skateboarding, <laughs> and I and then the guitar thing came up, you yeah. know. So I kind of like went from one thing to another to another. And as soon as he did that, uh, you know, I I was just like, man, can you just show me like some chords? I don't want to learn covers. I don't care about any of that shit. Just show me like chords. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I can do that. I'm like, amazing. So throughout the years, you know, different bands with my cousin and you know schoolmates and shit, and but the whole time I was set on being a veterinarian. Figure that one. And uh, once it came time, literally, to graduate from high school and all that, I was already like, you know, planning to go to the University of Florida, this and that. And I think I decided to take a year off after graduating high school and. My obsession was just trying to get a uh, like a four or eight track to record practices because I just wanted to hear them or the band and the music while we're not playing it. You know, it's just like it was just so over playing a song and being super excited about it or chasing that one take, but then it was never documented. You'd have to wait right. a whole week to the next band practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was chasing that, and you know, then. I went to the store, the guy convinced me that I should just, you know, yeah, you you know how to use your friend's machine, and that's cool, but you should get this, the digital setup, you have more tracks, this and that, and it was actually kind of affordable, I couldn't believe how affordable it was, I was like, all right, fine, fuck it, god damn it, and it kind of just took over, I would start and record practice, and I would sit, as soon as practice was done, everyone would be like winding down, I'm already there, like, messing with it, messing with the fucking soloing shit, hearing the sounds, oh, like, next week I should position the mic a little different, diving in that whole way, and, you know, then demos got pressed and passed around, other bands started approaching me to record, and I'm like, holy shit, like, you know, they would be like, hey, man, we want to play, like, five songs, like, I mean, we could only afford, like, 300 bucks, I'm like, yeah, I'll take it, you know, like, <laughs> right, well, let's right. do this, <laughs> and then the recording, the recording process, due to the band, and them figuring shit out, last six months, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I got into that, and then they just kind of, like, it, things, I guess it proceeded to get a little, like, uh, everything kind of was bumping up, like the next step, the next step, larger scale, started playing with Torch, uh, doing that. And at that point, I, I had a, actually opened up with a partner. I opened up a first recording studio, and that did pretty good. But I would, I missed like one or two Torch tours, and I just I felt all wrong about it. And after that, I started turning down like, you know, five grand for doing a record here so I can go make maybe 200 bucks or go, <laughs> go, or, or go, or yeah. go negative. A hundred, three hundred bucks right, on the right. road, <laughs> you know. And it was just look at the dude was cool, and like we sorted it out. I stayed with some equipment, helped him sell some other, bought some other overall the extended payment plan. And I mean, the whole sh- just I don't know. I think in the end, it just really took over my fascination with like sound and sound manipulation, and you know, making writing songs, and you know, the whole process of like writing, capturing it. Uh, then mixing it, mastering it, getting it pressed, getting the artwork done, it becomes a material thing, and then you go out and you play it, and hopefully people pick it up, and eventually people started knowing, they knew the songs, and they know the songs just as well as you do, and it you could be, 
just so far from home and someone knows the shit that you were breaking your head over in a bedroom or stuff that maybe came quickly right. or naturally, but it's just like, this shit's real and it's so awesome. And, you know, eventually, you know, with a lot of sacrifice and all that, you still, you know, you still keep coming back, I guess, or at least I do because it just feels great. I love the, it's like this fascination with sound pressure, uh, making instruments sound certain ways the fact that like you made it through a three or four minute song without it just completely like dilapidating, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. just, and, and then it, and there's always something new, you know, going to Europe for the first time. I was like, no shit. The UK for the first time. No shit. Uh, Japan, Australia, now Russia. And even me going, uh, as a guitar player now in the band to the UK for our tour we did in December was kind of big deal because there's a lot of stuff you know, a lot of guitar, bass music guitarists and bands that I'm like, damn, this is where it's from. This It happened here. So playing guitar there, to me, was kind of a big deal or something. I don't know. Um, I usually don't care about too much, but I thought it was exciting, you know, to play in uh, whether a certain country or town where some things that I might be doing or influenced or inspired by, whether I knew it in the moment or after it was all done and it all kind of came together, uh just being there, you know, it's like, damn, this is a place where, like, that kind of came from, you know? So it's always, there's always something to heighten the feeling just a little bit more, and it keeps you coming back. Nice. Well, it's been great talking to you, man. Thanks so much for doing it. Yeah, I was, dude. For and, sure. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah, hopefully it won't, it won't be, like, whatever, six, seven years <laughs> for, for the yeah. next time. <laughs> Dude, maybe, who knows? Maybe that'll be the next time we can go outside. Oh, Christ, don't even say that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, they say, they say it's something like 18 months, so. Ah, not, Short time. That's nothing. Yeah. Uh, keep... well, well, we'll be doing, you know, some fucking, like you said, it, it now comes the, the streaming era. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take care, brother. Keep that social distancing going, huh? You got it, man. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, there he goes Jonathan Nunez uh, Good talk man Love that dude Like what he does Like the dude Changes come
Change Has Come by Torch off the uh, part-time punk section. You can find that. Uh, you can find that on Bandcamp. Torch.bandcamp.com. Part-time punks is the name of the session slash record. It's a pay-what-you-want download. So, uh, yeah, go get that. Give them some money. They uh, Those dudes, fans don't run on hugs and uh, can't pay a rent or mortgage on a high five unfortunately be cool if you could if i can rule at high fives <laughs> Is this oh. yeah man good times so torchmusic.com uh torch.bandcamp.com as we mentioned uh, mere moments ago they're on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all the things that you, you would think that uh, bands and human beings would be on. You can uh, get them all there, see what they're up to. Maybe, maybe they're going to live stream a show. Who the hell knows? <laughs> it's a crazy time to be alive. <laughs> Oh, uh, Nina's amplification. I do not know the URL for that. I don't know if there's a URL for that. Let me see. Oh, it's NunezAmps.com. N U N E Z A M P S dot com. Basically, exactly like I think that's going to be. Uh, the Tetra Fet Drive is kind of his. Actually, I should have asked him who's his bestseller, but it's. <laughs> It's the one's most widely known. Signing off. <laughs> oh, we only talked for an hour and 45 minutes. Only, only we had more time. All the ships at sea. Oh, Christ. Okay, so. Anyone within the sound of my voice. Social lightning boat distancing. Uh, this is Proton Commercial. Thank you for listening to it. I've got 50,000 watts of power. The show airs Thursdays, Radio Nope, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific. Ionize the air. RadioNutrition.com for the archives. It's also on Stitcher, iTunes, uh, Spotify, and place you can find your podcast. It's all for free. This microphone turns sound into electricity. Big stuff coming up, not just soon, but the next couple days. And you hear um, me now? stay tuned. Out on Route 128, in the dark and lonely. Take it easy. I got my radio Keep on. That distance. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. 
This one goes out to a special girl. If there's no one there to receive It's the end of radio As we come to the close of our broadcast day This is a real 